I want to talk about this so-called scandal, about a so-called leak about NSA surveillance and this guy Edward Snowden. You know, I wasn't buying it from the beginning for several reasons, actually for two reasons, I mean, A, he didn't really leak anything. We knew the government is spying on us for at least 10 years, dating back to 9-11, because that's what Bush was accused of, and that's what Obama refused to prosecute Bush for. And since Obama refused to prosecute Bush, you could assume that, you know, he's continuing the same practices, and of course he did. But even before 9-11, there was already plenty of surveillance, Enough, in fact, that they were able to identify the 9-11 hijackers before the event. And, of course, they didn't stop them because it was their own inside job. 9-11 was in their own inside job. So when the, this program called Able Danger identified the hijackers, they just destroyed all, the, all of their information. So Snowden didn't reveal anything. And yet there was so much hype as if, I don't know, he discovered immortality of something, as if he discovered something real. He didn't reveal or discover anything. So the amount of press coverage was disproportionate by a factor of like 100, considering that nothing really happened. That's the first thing that was suspicious. And the second thing is that the similarity between Snowden and Julian Assange, who came before him, is great. And Julian Assange was, I mean, he wasn't immediately recognized by the community that he's an agent or at least uh, he's compromised in some way or at least he's not somebody who you should follow. So that, but eventually this was understood about Julian Assange. So when Julian Assange be, uh, got played out and nobody wanted to listen to what he has to say anymore, suddenly they come out with this new guy. So to me, immediately, this seemed like just a replacement for Assange. So let's go over maybe what makes them so similar. So how are they similar? Well, let's start from the beginning. Now, this may seem or sound a little bit, you know, funny or maybe not serious but it is serious first of all they look similar you know they're both relatively decent looking guys who are sort of young but not childish young you know uh, old enough to look like somebody who's not an idiot but young enough to not look like a fucking turtle and they're both white they're both not fat. Uh, they both have similar, you know, features to their face. Like, let's say I have a more rounder face and they have more, you know, like angular type faces. So, you know, they look similar. But w even stupider than that, they have names that sound similar. I mean, like, listen to this. Julian Assange, Edward Snowden. Sounds similar. And it has the same kind of ring to it. I mean, it's not like Barack Obama, you know? Barack Obama sounds like somebody from fucking Kenya, which is where he's from. But, you know, these people sound like they went to a university or something. So they have a similar ring to their name. They have a similar look to their face. They have a similar way of expressing themselves. You know, they, they don't speak like Obama, who's, who's like... Uh, you know, that they can, you know, formul formulate a thought. I mean, there, there's too much similarity. And the way the media treated both of them is exactly the same. Well, almost the same. Because the media, they started out a little bit more hostile towards Assange, but then they warmed up pretty quickly. And this, the way the media is treating this Snowden guy is a continuation of the way they were treating Assange, meaning they were giving him a hundred times more mm, coverage than he really deserved. I mean, 
maybe Assange deserved some coverage, but he got more than he should have. I mean, if anybody leaked something that they didn't want you to know, they wouldn't cover it at all. You would never hear about it. But Assange was all over the place in the mainstream media, New York Times, blah, blah, blah. And this new guy, even more so. So this is continuing the same trend as Assange and Kony 2012. I mean, like, why was Kony 2012 suddenly all over the news? What was so special about this fucking little video? Absolutely nothing. Oh, it went viral. Yeah, but who made it viral? You made it viral. I mean, if you if you keep fucking repeating, talking about it in the news every day for like two weeks, of course it's going to become viral eventually. So, same exact fucking pattern. They just hype something. They get something out of it. Like, in case of Kony 2012, they send armed advisors, meaning mercenaries, to this poor little African country to slaughter its people, you know, in order to save children. And uh, in case of Assange, they simply needed another face to the uh, opposition, same way as Alex Jones is an agent. So was Julian Assange. And you might ask, well, What's the point of promoting opposition, right? Well, it's quite simple. Because if you don't promote your own opposition, you may end up with a real opposition, not fake one. So that's what uh, Lenin, which you know, founded the Soviet Union, that's what he said. He said the best way to lead the opposition, or rather the best way to control the opposition, is to lead it ourselves. So that has always been the strategy. I mean, think about it. If they didn't have Alex Jones, if they didn't have Julian Assange, they might end up with who? Another Hitler. They might end up with somebody who'd actually do something, you know, somebody who'd actually round up the politicians, shoot them in the back of the fucking head, round up all the Jews, put them into FEMA concentration camps. I mean, you might end up with somebody who'd actually do something. And they don't want that, obviously, so what do they do? They create people like Alex Jones who, who keep repeating uh, every five seconds that you should never do anything violent, just keep buying my DVDs. And you you have this Julian Assange who says that 9-11 was not an inside job, that it was everything the government told you is true. And all those fucking passports that supposedly survived, all the, that the steel melted from the fire, but hijackers' passports did not burn. And they found them intact. All this bullshit. So according to Julian Assange, you should believe all that because it's all true. And according to Alex Jones, even though 9-11 was an inside job, but Israel didn't have anything to do with it, supposedly, and Hollywood is run by Arabs. That's what Alex Jones says. I mean, they give you this fake opposition that sounds like they're telling you something, Sounds like they're revealing some kind of truth to you, but actually they're only telling you what everybody already knows, and then they're mixing in a bunch of lies with it. So this is something they do all the time. They have these disinformation agents. And when they came up with the Snowden guy, the similarities between him and Assange were, like I said, all over the place, and immediately to me, like, oh no, here we go again. You know? And... It's not going away. I mean, why is he still in the news? Why? I mean, why was he in the news after two or three days? Why is he still coming out with some bullshit to say? And everybody listens to him like he's fucking Jesus and some kind of messiah and everybody wants to know what he's going to say. Why? Why? Who the fuck is he? Even, let's say, even if he, it was true, even if he wasn't an agent, and of course, he actually worked for the government, so... By definition, he's already almost an agent. But let's say he was just a nobody from the street, you know, he never worked for the CIA, and he's not an agent, and he really came out and leaked something that was real and important, which is not the case. None of it is the case. But let's say it was the case. So what? Why the fuck should anybody listen to him? Uh, why does he feel the need to preach Day after day after day after day. Who is he? He's nobody. 
But then that's what Julian Assange did. He was also preaching every day. He was like, yeah, this is this and this is that. And you should feel this way about this and this way about that. I mean, they're obviously put there the same way Alex Jones would, was put there to lead the sheep to the slaughterhouse. Just the same way as everybody else does, the way Obama does it, the way Bush did it. I mean, the so-called opposition, Alex Jones calls himself the tip of the spear in the fight against New World Order. This opposition is no different from Obama and Bush in Cheney themselves. I mean, they're every bit as part of the New World Order. And you have to realize, if somebody like Alex Jones is on the news... He appeared on the BBC, on Howard Stern, on Gerald on Fox, on ABC, on CNN. I mean, this fucking guy, Alex Jones, appeared on every single fucking mainstream TV channel and radio fucking show in Europe and United States. If he was really somebody who was fighting to overthrow the power structure. Would they fucking let him get so much airtime on their fucking corporate media? No. Same thing about Julian Assange. Would they talk? Would they constantly update us about what he had to say about something? No, they would not. And same thing about this fucking Snowden guy. So, but you know, people are fucking idiots. And they're taking this at face value, which is, you know, I guess it's not a surprise.